Hey guys, in our last video, we went into two example linear programming problems and we went through them and basically just um, unpacked them and, and figured out what are our variables and define those, what are our constraints, and what is our objective function. And we really kind of did that starting with the objective function and I, I went back and I took the example first example we did and we I kind of highlighted to remind you of what came from where we started by figuring out the objective function and that helped us define what we needed to know which is our variables and then we wrote constraints with all of the other info that we had about this needs to be at least this or at most that etc they're always in inequalities the constraints are always inequalities so now the rest of linear programming is first I'm going to graph my constraints and then I'm going to figure out what kind of polygon are, is made from those constraints. It's going to make some sort of shape in terms of like a quadrilateral or a triangle and I'm going to find the corners of that shape. And each of the corners is a point. And if my variables are L and S, that's like my X and my Y then each of the corners is like has an L and an S and I'm going to plug in each of the corners into the objective function and figure out which one gives us the maximum profit because it turns out this is the beauty of linear programming is it turns out that if you have a polygonal region that is indicated by some several constraints that any maximum or minimum of those constraints is going to happen at the corners. So that's why we're looking at the corners. So let's go to Desmos. Let me remember what my equations are here for 6SL plus 2S is less than or equal to 24. And I'll probably have to call those X and Y, I will. Yeah. 6, so X is going to stand is L, large book cases, plus. 2y is going to stand for my small book cases as it will be less than or equal to 24. Okay, there's what that looks like. Remember that inequalities are shaded on one side. So this is the shaded region that goes with that one. But that's not my only constraint. I have two other constraints. I have that L has to be greater than or equal to 2 and S has to be greater than or equal to 3. With three constraints, I would expect my polygon to be a triangle because triangles have three sides. So let's go look. L is greater than or equal to 2. Remember, L was X. So X has to be greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so that's indicated by that shaded region, this blue. And Y, the small, has to be greater than or equal to 3, I believe it was. Let's just go look to make sure. Okay. Now, when you have several different inequalities, let me see if I can zoom out a little bit here. There we go. When you have several different inequalities and that you have a shade, that means you have several different parts of your graph shaded. The actual solution to all of them as a system of inequalities, which is basically what you're doing. You're making a system of them. And I don't know why I have squared there. Let me take that off. That's much better. Um, the actual part that is indicated by as the solution to that system, the place where all of them are true, is going to be where all of them are shaded. So let's zoom back in. There we go. That's much better. So in other words, this triangle is where all those shaded areas overlap. So all the points that are in this triangle or on the edges of this triangle, since all of these say or equal to, let me move this over so you can see the shading colors. Since they're all or equal to, that means the lines themselves count, count as well. But that's where the points are that would fit all three of these constraints. Now, what I was saying is the special thing about this is it turns out that the corners will give us the most special points, basically. Any maximum or minimum value is going to happen at the corners. So if I find the corners of this, then I know that one of them is going to be my maximum profit. One of them is going to be my minimum profit. Period. Every time the optimal, the, the optimized points basically are going to happen at the corners. 
Now, I did this with Desmos. What if I'm doing it by hand? Well, remember X equals a number is a vertical line. And then you have to decide whether to shade on the left or the right of it based on where is greater than two. Y equals a number is a horizontal line. So I draw my horizontal line. This is Y right there, Y equals three. And then you shade based on what is greater than or equal to three. That, so that's above. This is just your run of the mill linear equation. You can do it two different ways. Um, the most common way we graph a linear equation is we put it in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, and then we go find the y intercept and we count off the slope to find the next point and count off the slope to find another point, etc. This one actually lends itself toward another way that we sometimes graph things, uh, lines, and that is by finding both the x and the y intercept. If I was doing this one by hand, I would probably find the x-intercept by plugging in y is 0. If y is 0, this whole part right here becomes 0. So 6x equals 24 tells me that my x-intercept is at 4, and there it is. And then if I do the same thing to find the y-intercept, 0 goes in for x, so I just have 2y equals 24, so the y-intercept is going to be at 12. Whoa, there it is. And so then I have that line. Okay, the more precise you can be, the better you're going to be able to see these points. But sometimes the points are not easy to see on the graph. Sometimes they're not right at um, pretty numbers, you know, whole numbers. So sometimes what we have to do is we have to solve the system of equations where those two lines interse intersect. To figure out or, or to figure out where the two lines intersect and that's a system of equations problem this one it would be a pretty easy to, system of equations to solve if i want to know where this point is i take this the sort of diagonal line that's the first one here and i say well where does that meet the line x equals two plug in x is two and you'll find out same thing here for this point right here if I want to know where this line meets the line y equals 3, well, plug in y equals 3 right here, and I'll find out. Okay, so now we have, once we have shaded it, we've graphed everything, we see where the shaded areas overlap, we see what kind of shape it is, a quadrilateral or a triangle usually, and we find the corners. Now we go back and we take those three points, 2, 6, 2, 3, and 3, 3, all right? And I plug them in. It was 2, 6, 2, 3, and 3, 3. Remember that what I was trying to find here was the maximum profit. One of them is going to give me the maximum profit. Basically, whichever one is biggest because it's maximum. So in other words, plugging in this, I have 50 times 2 plus 20 times 6. Well, that is um, 100 plus 120. That's 220. I don't, wanna, I don't like a dash there. Let's do that. All right. When I plug in this one, well, I know it's not going to be bigger than that because it has the same x value and the y value smaller. But I can. I can go ahead and plug it in just for kicks. 50 times 2 plus 20 times 3, that's 160. And then finally, 3 and 3, 50 times 3 plus 20 times 3. I have a cat nudging my elbow trying to get me to pet him. It's Animal Kingdom here tonight. 50 times 3 is 150. 20 times 3 is 60. 150 plus 60 is 210. So we have a winner. It is this one right here. That tells me that the highest profit, the maximum profit that this carpenter is going to make under these constraints is $220. And he's going to make it if he makes two of the large bookcases and six of the small bookcases. 
And that's my answer to the problem. Let's go ahead and do that for this one. I have not highlighted yet. Let's go ahead and recall where everything came from. The minimum cost was what we needed, so we went back and looked at the cost stuff. That gave us our objective function. All right, so that was this. Um, the constraints. This one came from the fact that we needed at least 140 scientific calculators plus or 140 per day that factory A could produce plus the 90 per day that that sorry plus the 60 per day that factory B could produce to be over 460 together and this one comes from the fact that we need to take the 25 graphing calculators per day that factory A can produce and per day, and the 90 graphing calculators per day factory B can produce and together we need to do that for uh, however many days is going to add up to more than 340 for those two. Um, factory A, uh, these don't actually come out of the problem. These were constraints just but by the fact that if I have two constraints, remember we had a triangular region shaded, two segments is not going to give me a region. It's not going to give me a polygon. I have to have at least three. So I thought about, well, what other limitations do I have? Well, I know that I'm not going to have a number, a negative number of days at either factory A or factory B. So I had two more constraints there that I can throw into the problem. So now I'm ready to graph. So my first thing I'm going to graph is this particular equation right here. 140A plus 60B is greater than or equal to 460. So 140A, let's see if I can use A. Sure, plus 60B is greater than or equal to, this is kind of hard for me to do. I'm having trouble. The <laughs> screencast thing is right on top of, there we go. There, I, can, I could finally reach it. It's greater than or equal to, and I lost my train of thought. So 140A, 60B is greater than or equal to 460. There's one. And then on top of that, I need to know that 25A plus 90B has to be greater than or equal to 340. And then we said, I don't want to add sliders. A has to be greater than or equal to zero. And B has to be greater than or equal to zero as well. And it really seems like I probably was wrong in thinking I could use other letters. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to change all my A's to X's because they want to make those sliders. They want to make those like other things in the equation that I can change for kicks to see how it affects things. Okay. I literally have a cat nudging my hand as I type. This is not very productive, kitty. Okay, there's my shaded region. So let's see what we got here. All right, places that all of the shading happens. Um, I think I have a problem here, and I do. Notice that the shading for everything would be up here somewhere. Let's see, do I have a problem? Let's go back and look at this. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, it looks to me like the place where everything is shaded is up here. So we don't have a upper limitation here. So could we, is there any other upper limitation we could come up with the problem? Hmm. I don't really see that we have one. I don't know that we really need one in this particular problem because we're going to be looking at the minimums. We want minimums. Um, minimum cost. So we're going to want 
the boundaries that are lower. We wouldn't want any that were out here bigger. Um, but that's a kind of an interesting situation. Usually we're given other, we're given enough boundaries that we really have a closed polygon. We don't really have one here. Okay. We have one down here, but does that one help us? Let's see. Is that one the shaded area? I don't think so. Yeah, it's not. The place where everything is shaded is out here. So let's look at this corner. Where is it that these two meet? Looks like it's right there. And this corner and that corner. So these are my numbers I'm going to plug in and see which one is going to give me the minimum cost. So 0 and 7.667. That's one, 1 1.892 and 3.252 and 13.60. All right, so I kind of wish I had another calculator handy. Um, <clears throat> and we're all going to plug all of those into my objective function. Let's see if I can grab one. Right. Whoa. No, I don't want to do that. Suddenly, there we go. So I've got 1200 times zero. That's easy enough. Plus 900 times 7.667. And that equals 6,000, dollars and 30 cents. So that's that's the cost of running factory B only for 7.667 days. Okay. Let's look at the cost for factory A for 1.892 days plus, okay, that didn't really help me. Okay, factory A is 1200 times 1.892 plus factory B is 900 times 3.252. That gives me a cost of $2,926.80. $2,926.80, I think that was. That's already looking better. And the last option is factory A only for 13.6 days. Well, I'm pretty sure that's definitely going to give me, yeah, a lot higher, 18,590, uh, 18,590 and 40 cents. Okay, so definitely the minimum cost comes from operating factory A for 1.892 days and factory B for 3.252 days. So I would say this is the minimum cost. And I would probably go ahead and say factory A for two days and factory B for four days. And that is my optimized function. Now, this is not honestly the odd. This is to me, not the ideal problem. There's some issues with this problem, but that's how you do it regardless. So hopefully that helped you. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.